Hello, this is Miss Amy here uh, to do another fun art project. Uh, today we'll be doing this really fun swirling fall leaves project. So let's go through our list of supplies that we need to complete this project. You'll need two pieces of watercolor paper. Um, you want the thicker paper for this project since we will be painting it and gluing on it. So. Uh, you could also use mixed media paper, but I recommend the watercolor paper. You will need some oil pastels, specifically a white one, and then um, some to color your fall leaves. <clears throat> You'll need a pencil, a glue stick, some scissors, some fall leaves to use as a template. I just went in my backyard and found these leaves, so you probably could do that. Or if you have some uh, picture of a fall leaf, that's fine also. Uh, paintbrush, watercolor paints, a cup of water, and a paper towel. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. <clears throat> so we're going to create our background first, and then we're going to set it aside to dry while we create our fall leaves. So first of all, you want this to be in landscape direction, which is long ways. And we're going to create um, some lines on our paper to create movement. And lines are a great way to create movement in art. And so the type of line we make will kind of determine what kind of movement. We want ours to look like it's swirling. So. What I'm going to do is start at one edge of my paper and just make some curvy lines going across to the other side. And I'm going to use my white oil pastel. And so I'm going to push down pretty firmly so I get a nice thick line and I'm just going to make a curvy line and not think much about it. Just make some curvy lines going across my paper. And I'm going to do the same with this one. There we go. And so now um, that'll look like creating movement on my paper. You'll make it look like the fall leaves are swirling through the air. So we can set that aside for now. And now we're gonna paint over our paper and the oil pastel will resist the watercolor paint. So we'll actually show through your paint. That is called wax resist. Now I'm going to use some cool colors in my background and then I'm going to paint uh, color my leaves warm colors so that would be a nice contrast in my picture. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my cool colors. I'm going to put a little bit of water in them just to start getting them activated. Purple, blue, and green. Now I'm not sure which colors I'm going to use yet but I'm going to start and just get those activated. All right. Now I'm going to do a wet on wet technique. So what I'm going to do is make sure my paintbrush is clean and just full of water and I'm going to paint water on my paper. Now I'm doing a small section at a time because I don't want my water to dry before I can get the paint added. And um, my paper dries very fast where I live. So I'm just going to do a small section at a time. And I'm going to paint right over the oil pastel like it's not even there. Just pretend it's not even there. All right, now they got some water in there. I'm going to add some color. I'm going to start with some green. So I'm going to swirl my brush and get lots of color on my brush. And then I'm just going to tap it into my water and it'll start spreading around. And I might push the paint. I don't want to brush my paint back and forth. I kind of want to let the paint go where it wants. So I'm just going to kind of tap it on the water and let it spread around. And if it isn't spreading very well, you may not have enough water on your paper. You might just have to add a little bit more water to your paper, which that's what I'm finding I need to do. There we go. That's spreading a little better now. So I'm just kind of tapping and pushing the paint around a little bit. And it's okay if you have light and dark areas. It just looks really cool. Gives it a really, really nice background. All right. So now I'm going to 
make sure my brush is clean and this adds some more another section of water and I can overlap a little bit you want your colors to overlap in the water to overlap then you won't end up with little lines okay so I'm gonna do another little section here of water and now this time I might add some blue in there this is a pretty blue yeah very pretty blue Yours might look a little different depending on what watercolors you're using, and that is okay. Sometimes different brands of watercolor look a little bit different. Slightly different shades of blue or green. These tend to, the ones I'm using right now are really bright. They're really pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to clean my brush and add another section of water here. I think I'm just going to do blue and green today. Those are really pretty together. I'm not going to add any purple. You can, though, add whatever cool colors you want to use. So I'll get some more green. Need a little more water there. And it's okay if your colors overlap a little. And they even can blend together a little bit. That is okay. So cool. So I've done this project several times and it's really cool because every time I do it, it turns out a little bit different. It never turns out exactly the same. That's kind of what I like about wet on wet is you never get the exact same look every time you do it. Add some more of this pretty blue in there. There we go. There's some good water that's spreading. And you can start seeing my line really well too. You can see where that oil pastel is resisting the paint and the water. All right, one more section to go. Fill that with water. Add a little bit of blue in there. All right, so once you've got your whole paper filled with paint, you can go through set your paint aside we won't need the paint anymore but you can go through with your paper towel and you can just kind of wad it up a little bit get some clean clean part of your paper towel and just tap it on the gently soak up some of that extra water that's on your paper get a clean area it's going to leave some cool textures in your background but it's also going to help your paper to dry a little quicker by soaking up some of those puddles of water. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry while I'm working on the leaves now. Wipe up some of that water. I don't want my other paper to get all wet. All right, so now we're gonna work on the leaf part. So we wanna get our other piece of paper out 
And I pick three leaves. I like a nice odd number and I like different sizes. So, so if you have just uh, one couple big leaves, that would be okay. I personally like to use odd numbers, but um, you use what you have. So I found these cool looking leaves out in my yard. So I'm gonna go ahead. Now, if you want to, you can trace your leaves, um, but if you wanna draw them yourself, feel free to draw them yourself. And I'm just doing a rough outline. I'm not getting it super perfect or exactly because um, I'm gonna be end up cutting these out anyway in coloring and I don't need to have exact. There's my big leaf. And I'm gonna do a couple small. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna trace this leaf a couple times instead of Facing the other one because I like this one a little better. Cute little leaf. So I'm going to actually flip it over and trace it this direction just to give it a little bit different look. All right. So with our leaves, if you notice on the leaves, they do have veins. That's how the leaves, the nutrients go into the leaf through those veins. So I'm just gonna draw some lines up into my leaf here, just to represent those a little bit. They don't have to be exact or all of them, just to kind of represent those on your leaf. And let's see. Just a couple on those. There we go. All right, so we're done with those. Now we're gonna get our oil pastels out and we're going to color. We're gonna layer our oil pastels so they blend really nicely. So I'm gonna do warm colors or yellows, oranges, and reds for my fall leaves and it'll contrast nicely to the background. So I think I'm gonna make a couple orange leaves and a red leaf. So for the orange leaf, I wanna start out I'm actually gonna start out with my color, my orange oil pastel. So I'm gonna press down so I get a nice thick, dark color and fill in my leaf. Don't worry about going over the lines because you're gonna cut these out and that's gonna take care of those. It'll give you a nice smooth edge. So don't worry if you color outside the lines a little bit. So I wanna make sure I fill that in nicely same with the sleeve. I'm going to do these two little ones the same. Okay, and then I'm going to pick out a lighter color. Probably, now I have a yellow-orange color I'm going to use. But if you have just yellow, that's fine. You could use a yellow over that. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press down, get a nice, thick, heavy color. And what happens is the oil in each of the colors blends together and it makes it look nice and smooth and it also fills up the little pieces of white paper showing through. It's a great way, just layering oil pastels is a great way to blend them together. One of the many ways you can do it. So now I have a nice orange fall leaf. And one more little detail that I wanna add to my leaf is I'm gonna take a little bit of the uh, red and I'm just gonna trace my veins a little bit. So my veins are usually a little bit darker than the leaf itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that just a little bit on my leaf. And, it, and some leaves have multiple colors on them. Like you would get, um, they sometimes are transitioning. So you might have a little darker towards the bottom. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of, you don't have to do this, but I like to so I'm just gonna add a little bit of red here at the bottom part of my leaf and color right over that, making it look like it's transitioning. That's really cool. And now my other leaf, I wanna do red instead of orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with a, a reddish orange color as my base. 
So I'm going to do the same thing I did with my other leaf. Make sure I'm pressing down and just color all that in. Nice and firm. You will get a little bit of your paper showing through, but that'll be, that'll blend when you put your color on top of it. <clears throat> okay. Almost done coloring this one. Remember, don't worry about going outside the lines. Okay, now I'm going to take my actual red and I'm going to go over the top of this. And the two colors will blend together and look really cool. If your oil pastel is dirty, has another color on it, just wipe it off on a paper towel. That will take care of that and clean it. And you won't get streaks of other color in your coloring. All right. I'm pressing just a little bit harder so it gets nice and blended together. Hides those little white papers. It's a textured paper, that's why I have to push down a little bit harder to get rid of those. All right, and then I'm going to take some brown on this one and just trace over my veins with a little bit of brown just so it stands out a little bit. There we go. And maybe add a little bit of brown to the edge. There we go. All right, once you have your leaves done, then you can cut them out. Now, um, you want to make sure that you don't glue your leaves to your background until your background is completely dry. And that takes a little bit of time. Probably, definitely within an hour that it should be dry. Unless you have a hair dryer or something, you can dry it quicker. Um, definitely, you can do that. And then you'll be able to glue your leaves on a little quicker. So, let me get this cut out. And then I'll... What you want to do with your leaves, though, before you glue them on, you kind of want to place them on your background to see where you would like them before you glue them on, too. So once you have your leaves cut out, what you want to do is you want to um, get your background. See, mine is still wet. I wouldn't need to let it dry before I could glue them on. But you kind of want to see... You want to place the leaves over your line um, and you want to go in different directions. You don't want them all going the same direction. You want them to look like they're getting tossed through the air a little bit. So you might glue one upside, upside down. You might glue another one sideways. But once you have them all cut out and your background is dry, then you can glue them on. And here's the sample one where I've is dried and I've glued them and see how I have them going different directions. Um, that way it looks like, and I've glued them on the lines, it looks like they're getting tossed through the air. And that is all there is to this project. It's a fun fall project. So I hope you enjoyed this project. And I always enjoy seeing pictures of finished projects from students. So feel free to share um, your finished project with me. But thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.